Justice Helen Whitener, through your exemplary career of engaged citizenship, your commitment to equal justice, you are a role model and an inspiration for so many. Yours has been a remarkable journey. You have served with honor as a justice of the Washington Supreme Court, and before that as a judge on the Pierce County Superior Court. Your distinguished career also includes service as a judge on the Board of Industrial Insurance Appeals, a pro tem judge for the City of Tacoma Municipal Court and the Pierce County District Court, 14 years as a prosecutor, defense attorney, and managing partner of the law firm Whitener, Rainey, and Witt. In addition to your judicial service, you're an inspiring voice for human rights and access to justice, including your birth country, Trinidad and Tobago, where you spoke at the invitation of the U.S. Embassy. Beyond this, you have been tireless in your commitment to community service. You are a faculty member of the National Judicial College, have co-chaired the Washington State Minority and Justice Commission, chaired the Equity and Fairness Committee of the Washington State Superior Court Judges Association, served on the board of the International Association of LGBT Plus Judges, among many, many other volunteer commitments. You have even taught civics to seniors at Lincoln High School in Tacoma. We are certainly not the first to recognize your many accomplishments and contributions, but this past February, the American Bar Association honored you with its Stonewall Award, citing you as, I quote, a voice for many marginalized communities so we can have just a system that works for all. Among your many other awards, you've been the Washington State Bar Association's Charles Z. Smith's Excellence in Diversity and Inclusion Award, the President's Award from the International Association of LGBTQ Plus Judges, and for mentoring young women from diverse backgrounds to enter the legal profession, the Chief Justice Mary Fairhurst Passing the Torch Award from the Washington Women's Lawyers. President Crawford, in recognition of this exemplary career of Justice G. Helen Whitener, and on behalf of the recommendation of my faculty colleagues at the University of Puget Sound, I ask that we present her as a candidate for a degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Puget Sound, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the election by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon G. Helen Whitener the honorary degree Doctor of Laws with all the rights, privileges pertaining thereunto. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Matthews, for such kind words and for inviting my wife, Lynn, and I to be included in the activities you do with your students. I do appreciate that. And good afternoon, President Crawford, faculty, trustees, graduating class, and my fellow honoree, Miriam Barnett, distinguished guests, family and friends of this year's graduates. I can't help myself right now, so I'm going off script. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are here to recognize you. Also, I'd like to recognize my wife, Lynn, who is present, retired Command Sergeant Major Hua, her friends, and mine for over 17 years, Colonel Yolanda Summons of our Army, and her wife, Dr. Renee Harrison, professor at Howard University. Thank you. My ride and die, Sharon Washington and Jacqueline Franklin. And each of us should have a ride and die, and here's why. And I have gone off script, so I know my wife right now is real nervous. But here's why. 
I wrote at least three speeches for today. When I read the first one, "To My Ride and Dies," before I could get past the first sentence, hand went up. That was Jackie. Who are you writing this for? Boring. I scrapped it and I said, "Okay, I'll try again." When I started, I got past the first paragraph, and hand went up. Two, actually, Jackie and Sharon, and I know they're dying right now, but I can't help myself. And they said, "This is not about you. They can Google you." This is about them and their day because I'd never given a commencement speech. The speeches I give are usually to the legal community or human rights organizations. So I had no clue what I was supposed to be doing. I gather after I got those two comments in regards to a speech. So I tried again, and hopefully this one will pass muster because I didn't read it to them. <laughs> I just didn't want to take that chance again. <laughs> so, congratulations, class of 2022, our future leaders, change makers, game keepers, and trailblazers. It is so great to be with all of you today in person. I joined the state's highest court at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, so virtual proceedings has been the norm for me. Traveling to court has been great. Two doors down from my bedroom, and honestly, wearing a black robe—you didn't want to know what I had on underneath it. <laughs> so I can't believe that I'm now on an actual stage, no green screen, no virtual background, and no filters, and I can say, "Yes, I'm not a cat. <laughs> It's me, and this is truly wonderful." Today is a joyous day, your day. You will be receiving your degrees. You've confronted a pandemic that brought the world to a standstill, but not you. You did not let it stop you. You persevered. You did it. So at this time, I'd like the class of 2022 to give yourselves an applause, because this is truly commendable. You see, a weaker person would have just quit, but that person is not you. Failure is not an option for you. Adversity is part of life, and sometimes it can be daunting. But that is when your true character is seen. I thought of something my mother always said that I'd like to impart to you. And she said, "When faced with adversity." You are given a glass that is filled halfway. Always see the glass as half full, and not half empty. You are presented with an opportunity and with time to complete it, as opposed to seeing it as you're running out of time. Taking that perspective will allow you to face the opportunity with energy, insight, passion, and courage. Those are the things that brought you here to today. During a, a pandemic, now many opportunities will come your way, and when they appear, give them sincere consideration. If anyone had told me that one day I would be sitting on the highest court of any state, the Supreme Court, I would have thought that they had lost a few screws. In fact, when I moved to Washington State, I was unable to find work in my field of study. International marketing and trade. I took a job at an accounting firm where there were a few accountants who also had law degrees. I never thought of becoming an attorney, until one of them, one of those accountants slash attorneys, shared his observations of my reasoning and analytical skills on an assignment I completed for him. He asked me to consider law school, and I remember thinking. If this attorney thought I had the skills to be an attorney, then I owed it to myself to try. Interestingly, I never thought of becoming an attorney until becoming a judge. Sorry, until a judge, after observing me as both a prosecutor and then later as a defense attorney, 
suggested I should consider becoming a judge. And again, I thought. I owed it to myself to at least try. That judge then followed up by mentoring me and gave me opportunities to pro tem, or as we say, cover his court docket when he was unavailable. Other judges observed my ability to conduct various court proceedings, so they then asked me to pro tem for them. These experiences gave me the unique perspective of having held all three roles, prosecutor, defense attorney, and judicial officer on all three levels of our state's trial courts. I wonder what would have happened if I didn't try. When you least expect it, someone is looking at you. They are looking at what you do, how you do it, how you interact and treat others. Sometimes it takes someone seeing possibilities for you that you never thought for yourself. When these opportunities, sometimes they may come in the form of adversity, but when they come present, and they present themselves, give it a try. What is the worst that can happen by trying? You fail? Well, everyone fails at something at some time, and if you fear failure, you're fearing success. I'm going to repeat that for you. Because if you fear failure, you're fearing success. I say if, at first, you don't succeed, try, try again. You will have no regrets, and the worst five words you can utter is, I wish I had tried, because then it is too late. You have lost the opportunity. I want all of you to remember the drive and conviction you had in pursuing this degree. Remember the effort you made to get to this point. I want you to remember the feelings of accomplishment that you, had, that you have today, and I want you to carry that forward with you. Sometimes, as we advance in our careers, we forget what got us where we are. Remember what got you here today, and remember how it has made you feel. Law school challenged me physically and mentally, and sometimes the challenge was unbearable. I worked three jobs, and I was determined to persevere and complete the goal I had set for myself. I was determined to succeed. I spent many long hours working and studying, not knowing where it would take me. I believed in me, and look at what happens when you do. Don't forget, you're the first person to believe in you. And honestly, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Class of 2022, you have an opportunity like no other. You have an opportunity to write your narrative and continue to believe in yourself. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. You are powerful, and opportunities to be innovative will come your way. Opportunities to create impactful and sustainable solutions to today's problems. And you heard the prior speakers talk about those problems, problems of inequality and inequities. You can make impactful and sustainable solutions and changes to today's problems. As you innovate and create the future you want for yourself and others, I'd like you to do a few things. Think outside the box. I was outside the box. Think big. I always thought I could do anything. Think inclusive. I was never better than anyone, so therefore, they can always be part of my circle. Think transparent. You have a responsibility to those that you will have coming behind you. And think accountable. And I'll tell you why in a minute. As you create this future, learn from the past. But if the past has not worked, don't recreate the wheel. We see that time and time again. 
So remember, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. You didn't earn this degree to be insane. Finally, class of 2022, as our future leaders, change makers, gatekeepers, and trailblazers, many of you, like me, will be the first in many spaces. Remember that you are standing on the shoulders of others who went before you and who have paved the way for you. Being a trailblazer means you are the first to blaze a trail, and knowing that you did not do it just for yourself. You understand the true service. You understand that true service is never about you, but is always about them, the ones without voices, money, homes, family, their minds, their bodies, and their soul. You already see them. Now your charge is to use your hard-earned degree to figure out ways to try and help them connect with them and work for and with them. Class of 2022, the real acknowledgement of having a degree is when you use it not just to be a first, but when you use it to ensure that you are not the last. Again, congratulations, class of 2022. And I'm going to end with my island saying, go forward and kill him with excellence. Thank you, Justice Widener. We're very grateful for your outstanding encouragement and the contributions that you make to our community.